is then crypto payments. Actually, uh, I would focus uh, on the Ready Network. Uh, so let's start with who am I? Uh, my name is Pisut or Om. Uh, can you hear me? Everyone can hear me, right? Okay. Oh, I need you loudest. Okay, okay. Good, great. Uh, my name is Pisut. I actually am the software engineer for the Perlin, uh, the Singapore-based uh, blockchain companies. And what Perlin does is uh, we're going to make uh, the new distributed ledgers of something like Ethereum, something like Tron, if you may heard, if you uh, have the cryptocurrency backgrounds. But we're going to use the DAC technology in order to make the blockchain become more faster and and in order to make it more faster we need to use a, a direct ascendix graphs uh, it's not like blockchain because it actually the blockchain is you storing the information into the block and keep con connecting the block along the chains and this so called the blockchains so we, we're going to use something like a DAC and uh, we hopefully to, to make it become uh, overcome the Ethereum or yours or Bitcoin and yeah we also provide the uh, application developments exclusively for the enterprise uh, that is what we do the Perlin we working on the Golang and Rush and Reacts nothing related to the Pythons and uh, why, why I'm going to to talk about the Red End because uh, the Red End network is actually made entirely by Python. Okay, if you have the crypto background or you are the developers in the blockchain side, you may know that everyone in this space, we're using Golang, we're using Large, but Red End, they come out with something that different from the older company, they're using Python. Uh, I hopefully that you might uh, know a little bit about the crypto. Uh, I assume that you know because of the, if you don't know, you might attend to the another sections, okay? And basically, you you may know the basic Python, and the ERC twenty may not important because I'm going to uh, explain uh, what does the difference between the liquid asset and the non-liquid asset in the later slides. Uh, Okay, and you might be interested on the scaling solution over the Bitcoin and Ethereum. And uh, why I talk about Redden, why I'm not, why I'm not talk over the Lightning Network on the Bitcoin, because of, I assume that you are the developer, you may need to make something, right? Because if you learn on the Lightning Network, uh, your applications uh, can only use the Bitcoin. But for the Reddit network, if you are uh, raising funds from the ICO and you promise your client to make something with your token, the Reddit network is a good opportunity to, for you to, to, to help your users uh, using or spending the, your ERC20 token. So the agenda is of my section. Uh, the first one, I'm going to talk a little bit about the blockchain, just one slice, uh, not talk too long, uh, and then I'm going to talk over the uh, what kind of the applications that we can uh, make by the blockchain. Uh, the hottest topics on, on this space is will be the DeFi or decentralized finance, and I'm going to talk about the what does the difference between the DeFi and the fintechs, okay? And then going to talk over the problems of the layer one blockchain. So what does the meaning of layer one and layer two? And provide the examples of the layer two scaling solution uh, 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 right now, uh, side chain, state channels. And this talk would focus on the state channels. and. Because of this data channel is the first layer two solution that introduced to the market from, uh, it actually it, it introduced in 2016 uh, from a Lightning Network. And after that, 
we have uh, many solutions uh, out there, and that protocol also uh, considering as the uh, layer two scaling solutions. And then the next one, uh, I make the simple uh, stationary skip, then make by Python, and I hopefully this one will be uh, the most boring part of uh, this presentation, and then uh, going to. Uh, Telling you a little bit uh, how we can uh, set up uh, Reden node up and running and basic API. If you are the developer, we intend to uh, integrate your application to the Reden network and how we can do that. Let's start. Uh, what does the blockchain? Okay. Actually, at the basic level, so the blockchain is just the database, but the database that uh, scalings over the, the world, like Bitcoin network or Ethereum network. They have a one single network. Uh, and it actually, uh, it keep growing uh, the data. Uh, uh, it introduced uh, in 2008 uh, by the Satoshi Nakamoto's. Uh, we not know who, who uh, who the guy is, but he published the white papers about the P2P uh, cryptocurrencies, and then we let us, uh, uh, the community, the Bitcoin Foundation, uh, let us uh, uh, release the Bitcoin to the world. Uh, so, uh, why we need to learn uh, the blockchain? Because uh, nowadays we have something called uh, decentralized finance, and the blockchain is the, the major part to make the decentralized finance happenings. And by the way, uh, both fintechs and decentralized finance is a way to uh, allow the money to be borrowing. Like, uh, I, am want, I want to borrow the money from uh, the financial institutes. Uh, I can. Uh, requires uh, the form through the website, web application, or even on the mobile banking. And uh, not another important one is collectorized. Collectorized is become more uh, uh, popular nowadays because uh, on the cryptocurrency side, we do have uh, something called stable coin. Stable coin means the, the the token that the price is stable to the specific traditional currencies, unlike Bitcoin, unlike Ethereum, uh, like uh, USDT, US dollar theaters, or Dai token. The price is uh, keep uh, stable with the US dollars. Uh, one US dollar equal to Dai one Dai token. One US dollar equal to the one US dollar theaters, for example. I'm not yet heard over the uh, Thai bot uh, statement call yet, but yeah, it might come in the uh, following years for sure. And so what are the difference? The main difference between the DeFi and the FinTech is actually uh, the FinTechs, it heavily relied on the bureaucracy. Bureaucracy means uh, it still needs somebody to, to improve your transactions. It still needs somebody to look on what you want to do. Like, uh, if you want to borrow the uh, money, right? Uh, you, 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 you have the business. You want to uh, borrow the money from bank. You need to apply into the form, and the bank officers will see on your form and look to your background. And he may approve it. Or not approve it. We do not know. But this is called something bureaucracy. Maybe you know someone at the bank. Uh, you have really bad background on the financial, like you borrow the money, but do not return to them. But for now, you want to borrow the gains. You can maybe you can give uh, some library to bank officers to approve your loan once again. Uh, that the problem about the fintechs. So what about if? Defy the decentralized finance. We try to minimize the bureaucracy. We try to cut away uh, of the humans. 
uh, human errors or away from the application. And then we can introduce the task minimize software, like uh, everything need to resize on the smart contact. If you really want to uh, borrow the money, you can write the form, you can provide the data, and the, decision, the, the decisions that approve or not approve, it come out from the smart contact without the need of the, uh, the officers. Because uh, the DeFi, we need to use the smart contact. That's why uh, it heavily rely on the uh, smart contact or the blockchain. Uh, you may not see the DeFi application that using the traditional database like MySQL or Oracle. And basically, the DeFi is want to bring down the bureaucracy levels, like uh, cut off the human error, cut away the human away from the systems. And it used the blockchain to ensure that each individual or each client is the right owner to, to that asset. And it's supposed to be open source because uh, sometimes you may not clear about what you're going on. Then you, if you are the developer, you can take a look on the source code. You can take a look on the smart contact. That the logic inside the smart contact is correct or not correct. But if you are the non-developers, you might uh, find the developer friend to, to take a look at that. And at the end of the day, it will uh, uh, fewer the operational risk, like uh, because everything is uh, uh, transact on the smart contract on the blockchain, so it doesn't need to hiring the human to operate uh, uh, on the. Uh, Financial business at all. Examples of the uh, DeFi project right now, uh, we have a mini project that do stable coins, uh, do KYC, do insurance, and do lending, do payments, and yeah, uh, the Leda network. Yeah, so considering at uh, the the payment DeFi project. Uh, let's talk about the problem of the blockchain nowadays. Uh, so why we need Redden, why we need the layer two scaling solution? That because uh, we do have the bottleneck on the mainnet, on the Bitcoin, on the Ethereum. So because uh, if we turn back to 2017, on that time, Bitcoin price it went up to uh, 600,000 Thai baht at that moment. And people on that time that came and I on Bitcoin on Ethereum, and what is that? Is, it, is that a scam or not a scam? And yeah, I switched to blockchain space on that time too. And uh, the consequence of that, it made the network become uh, uh, heavily congested, heavily congested, and it means that people using, people try to use, people try to buy, people try to sell the Bitcoin, and it make the whole network uh, have like a topic jams and make the network fee super high. Uh, for uh, somebody that may not have the experiences on cryptocurrencies, because when you transfer the Bitcoin to your friend, to your uh, boss, to your colleagues, you need to pay the network fees. The network fees will belong to the, uh, uh, the miners, because uh, the miners provide the computational resource, you need to pay some fee for them. And all that time, because it have the heavily congestion, the network fee is so high. And then we are talking about the alternative solutions. Uh, people are talking about, maybe we can add another layer plug into the blockchain network, and we call it layer two. And then the Bitcoin and the Ethereum uh, become the layer one, okay? And actually, for the layer two solution, it first introduced by the Lightning Network for Bitcoin in uh, 2016. And then 2017, uh, the German company tried to make something similar to uh, Lightning Network, but for the Ethereum named uh, Redden Network. And the Different, the main different about the Bitcoin and Ethereum. Bitcoin is actually the peer cryptocurrencies, but 
on the Ethereum, it actually the smart contract platform. It means uh, you can make your own cryptocurrencies. And I like to talk over the red end because uh, it can help the community. Maybe it can help your business. Maybe you already issue the cryptocurrency. You can use a uh, red end network. But uh, however, it's not yet ready. Uh, but however, if you heard about the layer two uh, solutions, now they not yet ready except for the only one, which is the Lightning Network. And that is also the main reason that I, I talk today, because of if I'm going to talk the other layer to scaling solution, that not yet ready, you might uh, uh, think that, uh, why need to listen? But however, on this stage, on the technologies, uh, it, it almost ready, and on the Lightning Network, you can use, you can uh, set up the lighting network and use uh, at the daily basis. And the why we need the layer two scaling solution because uh, not everything need to reach the common consensus. Uh, I need to show you a little bit of pictures because nowadays. Uh, the blockchain network, we are facing something called a blockchain dilemma. Blockchain dilemma means uh, each network cannot achieve these three features at the same time. For example, Bitcoin and the Ethereum, it can only achieve two from three from these triangles, which are the security and the decentralization. It cannot achieve the scalabilities because when you transfer Bitcoin, when you transfer the Ethereum, you need to wait for five or 10 minutes for the, uh, the validators or the miner to approve your transactions. So the Bitcoin and the Ethereum cannot achieve the scalabilities. By the way, on the, any others, the blockchain platform like the EOS or Tron, they can, only, they can achieve the scalabilities like they can uh, provide the instant uh, finalities, like I can transfer the one EOS, I can transfer the one Tron to another users within two or three seconds. But however, the decentralization issue is uh, quite concerned over that network because they uh, narrow down the, uh, the miners or uh, the validators into uh, no more than 21 uh, nodes for the whole network. Uh, let back get back to the slides. Uh, actually, uh, the layer two can uh, break into the, actually many subcategories, but I'm going to talk about uh, these two subcategories. The first one is the state channels. Uh, the state channels are uh, uh, lighting network for Bitcoin, radio network for Ethereum. And the side chain, uh, you may heard over the past months. Many people on this uh, blockchain industry want to talk, oh, I want to use Plasma, I want to use Plasma. This is a, uh, one in the sub categories of the side chains. Uh, one interesting I want to uh, talk is the Plasma, the main uh, contributors over the Plasma project uh, is uh, come from the Omiseko, and Omiseko is based in Bangkok. And when they launch the alpha versions and beta versions of the of their network, they name by the PTS station. The alpha version they name as the RE network. RE is come from the BTS station. And then on the beta version of the network, uh, they just name as Samro. Uh, uh, let's dive deep into the stage channel. Actually, stage channels can divide into the another two, uh, two uh, subcategories of the stage channels. But the last one uh, is, not, is still in, in the development. Uh, but the first one, or Redden, or 
Lightning Network try to achieve is uh, so-called the payment state channels. What the payment state channel? The payment state channel is uh, the state channel to track the payment activity between the parties in the bidirectional. Uh, the key points of the payment channels is to help transfer the liquid assets. So what does the difference between the liquid asset and non-liquid asset? Liquid asset is like a cryptocurrency, like the currencies. One token plus one token equal two tokens because uh, the two token has the same entity, it can merge together. Uh, but however, on the non-liquid assets, on in the crypto space, uh, sometimes called non-fungible token, uh, this kind of token cannot merge together. For instance, uh, if I tokenize uh, like uh, like insurance, or for example, if I tokenize the, the ownerships of the car, like uh, I have one ownership of the car that belongs to me, and then we have another token that which is the ownerships of the car, another car, and belong to another uh, person. This kind of token, because it's unique, it cannot combine together. On that case, we need to use another kind of state channel, which is the generalized state channels, which is we uh, need to uh, help track uh, the state inside the smart contact. Payment state channel is to track the liquid asset. Generalized state channel is to track the non-liquid asset. And yeah, it's still in a heavily development channel on the generalized state channels. Uh, for the project that make a generalized state channel, you may heard over the uh, seller network or uh, some project that I don't heard the name yet. Uh, the, re the interesting part for this presentation, which is I have made a very simple script to explain about the, how the state channel work in Python. Uh, you can check out my GitHub uh, on the repo name state channel uh, examples. Actually, I just uh, fall from another one. It's quite interesting. But for examples, if we want to make the state channels, if I want to make the my own Reddit network, uh, we need to create the account or uh, on two parties, like on the left hand side, we create an account uh, of the Alice, on the right hand side, we create an account of Bob. Uh, then we, the first we need to generate a private key. Five minutes. Ah. Five minutes. Okay, first we need to generate a private key. Uh, and then, okay, I need to talk a little bit fast. Uh, at the end, we're going to have the two wallets. One wallet belong to Alice, another one wallet belong to Bob, okay? And on that case, uh, we deposit the one token to Alice and another one token to Bob. So you, when you see, see on the tables, one is in the blockchain and Bob hold another one token in the blockchain as well. So, on the next skip, we need to uh, make the smart contact uh, for the state channels. Uh, once we have the smart contact deployed in the, uh, the uh, blockchain network, actually, it, in the, this is just made by Python. It, not, uh, it cannot use on any blockchain, but it's just for the eduction so when we have the smart contact, we can deposit, we need to deposit, uh, we need to open the state channels and deposit the one token, like the one Ethereum into the smart contact. At least put one, Bob put one, and the token will lock down inside the smart contact. And yeah, it's basically uh, it opens the state channels between a two party, between a list and Bob. And what going on then, uh, we're going to make the the off-chain functions 
like I want to uh, transfer the 0 0.1 uh, token from, Ali from Bob to Alice, I need to write the message, like I need to specify uh, how much I want to send to, to, to Alice, and I need to uh, generate the hash. Uh, actually, I need to generate the uh, signature, digital signature using the elliptic curve uh, digital signatures like uh, in the Ethereum or like uh, in the Bitcoin. Once we have the message, uh, the message will contain the values and it contains the signatures. We, can, we need to send this message to Alice. Alice will see the values is correct or not by uh, just try to uh, check the hash. If the value is correct, uh, then the at least we're going to check the uh, the signature is correct or not by uh, recover the uh, elliptic curves signatures. If uh, value value is correct, digital signature is correct. It means that uh, the transaction is already approved uh, in the off chain. It means that. Actually, in the smart contract, and on the blockchain side, on the layer one size, one one is locked down, or to, uh, totally to token in the smart contract, right? But on the off chain size, on the state channel size, Alice now got 1.1, and Bob now got 0 0.9. And if Alice or Bob want to crash out, uh, we need to close the channels, which is we need to. Uh, invoke uh, the function in the blockchain. Uh, actually, we need to uh, add more the method in the smart contact, and then we're going to close the channels by provide the uh, digital signatures and uh, whatever, and then the token we're going to release from the smart contact back to uh, the recipient, back to a list, back to box. Uh, so Red Network is the off-chain scaling solutions for transfer the ERC20 tokens in the Ethereum blockchain. Actually, it's the uh, Ethereum version of the Bitcoin Lightning Network that provide the uh, low fee scalability with uh, uh, that applying the state channels technology that I talked about recently. And it allows the token to be transferred without the need of the miners or the validators. Uh, so you can see if we transfer the token in the on-chain, uh, you need to send transition into the smart contact and then smart contact will direct the uh, transaction into the blockchain. And after that, uh, it need to wait the miner or the validator to be approved. But however, if we move to off-chain, uh, it almost immediately. Uh, I may pass this one. Okay, I may pass this one to the benefit because uh, while we need the scaling solution, while we need the red and it can achieve, it really fit for the micropayment. Imagine that if you want to use uh, even your credit card, credit card provider may not allow you to transfer uh, the 10 cent or 10 stang on each transaction, but with the red and with the scaling solution, uh, it allows us to just send a, rate, a few dollars to uh, each other. But the limitation of the red network is that uh, maybe it's not uh, okay for the user yet because you need to deposit the token in the smart contact. Like if you want to access uh, your money, you actually need to uh, lock down some money in the smart contact before you're using like if you want to use the ATM, you have the bank account, you need to spit uh, some money to uh, 
like uh, uh, the ability to use the ATM, something like that. Uh, so I just make the guideline if you're interested on how to uh, set up the Raiden nodes. I make it on the repo name Raiden setup. And after that, you can access the web UI uh, at the port 5001. Uh, I have the examples. I just make the two Raiden nodes on the morning. Uh, the one node uh, belongs to the wallet. Uh, start with 0, D, 7. And the second node is belong to the address. Start with 7, 7, 7. OK. I just set it up uh, around 20 minutes ago. Uh, let's try to open the channels between uh, two nodes. Uh, so I can open the channels to this guy. Just copy the address. I use the wrap eater. And yeah, when you open the channel, you need to deposit. I do have four in my account. Also, I deposit two. And it need to wait some time because it's going to evoke the smart contact, the red and smart contact. And yeah, it might need some time because this happened on the on-chain. Actually, not the main net, it's on the test net. And when, <laughs> sorry, we can, uh, get back to the slides and maybe I get, uh, we'll con get back to the Raiden UI once again. Uh, yeah, last three slides. Uh, if you are the developers, like you can uh, use, you can uh, integrate with the Raiden by using REST API. Uh, you can uh, open the channels to uh, send the message to this endpoint and specify the partner address and we're going to uh, uh, going to uh, make the transitions between uh, parties and you need to specify the token address and how much you're going to deposit and later on if the channel is already initialized then you can turn first you can make a payment uh, between each others and that all and let get back to the UI? No. Okay. Assume that if you open channel success, you can see the channels uh, up here, and you can see the the recipients at this. But however, I have the pictures. Okay. Yeah, like this one. You can see the channels that uh, you open. And after that, you can make the uh, transfers. Like uh, this belong, this Raiden UI belong to this guy, right? If you want to pay some money to this guy, you just click pay and specify the token and done. So the token will be transferred to the, uh, this guy uh, almost immediately. Oh, okay, done. Uh, no, maybe some error on the network, uh, but forgive me. Do you guys have any question? You can ask. So this is a Q and A session. Do you use the real light? Sorry. Do you use the real light? Uh, no, not yet, but they launched the mainnet uh, just one or two months ago, and for at this moment, uh, the Red Network uh, allowed to use a specific token in the mainnet, but on the testnet, right, this one, you can use whatever token, and if you have your own token, you can uh, 
just like the register you are talking over here and you need to wait uh, some time and then you can see your token in uh, the token screen but on the mainnet it allow only I think wrap eaters um, we hopefully that they're going to unlock uh, the token uh, around this year but however I would say that this day channel is is more like is a practical it practical in, in the term of if we talk about the scaling solution today nobody is ready plasma is not ready but the channel is almost ready but uh, the for and con between the side chain and the state channel this state channel you need to have the state channel node up and running all the time so it might be a problem of, of the developers more questions okay so I have questions anybody uh, hold Bitcoin or Ethereum raise your hand oh, no. I do. okay <laughs> okay okay great yeah Bitcoin is not a scam that is <laughs> oh. <laughs> so okay Come. so thank you very much and uh,